Welcome all. I'm Dr. Juliet Stoltenke, and I'm going to engage with you around the topic, the implementation of a sustainable support structure and showcasing authentic practices. In these times of complex digital connectedness, we need to focus on building networks and relationships. And this digital connectedness have changed the way we value things, our relationships, our opportunities, and in some cases, even our wellness. We've seen new technologies change education and access to education. And as a leader, it is important that we create sustainable support structures. And moreover, that we're able to showcase authentic practices because we are a learning organization and we need to ensure that we promote a learning organization culture Colleagues in the higher education sector are engaging in discourse around expanding student access and success, successful integration of ICTs, and our president of our country have said that we're seeing quantum leaps in technology and innovation in this fourth industrial revolution. However, unless it is approached in a collaborative manner, underpinned by a developmental agenda, we could merely just continue to serve to entrench existing disparities within and between countries. At the University of the Western Cape, we have established a professional support structure, namely the Centre for Innovative Education and Communication Technologies. The Centre drives emerging technologies and innovative collaborative projects to support teaching, learning and assessment. And the areas of support are independent by the alignment of scholarly outputs, engagements and projects with the institutional operating plan and national policies and imperatives. So we work within this framework of teaching and learning, research, community and collaboration. And when we reflect on our work, we reflect in relation to the impact for student access and success. As a leader, I have to ensure that this professional support structure is able to be sustained off campus and on campus to support staff and students. So over the past few years, the university has seen significant strides in the improvement of teaching practices and especially online teaching, learning and assessment practices prior to the national lockdown due to COVID-19. We recorded that approximately 88% of academics had adopted online practices. And by September 2020, 95% of academics had adopted online teaching practices during this COVID period. But let me pause there and let us think about the South African context. Many of our students at UWC still require basic computer literacy skills. So what did we do during this lockdown period? About 3,650 students engaged in our digital academic literacy program. We could not meet with them face to face. So they engaged via Hangouts, our e-learning platform, and we engaged in 55 classes a week with them online teaching them basic computer literacy skills. It is important that we continue with this large-scale student development program. We cannot forget about our first-year students or the novice users who need basic computer literacy skills whilst we are engaging with thousands of students within online environments. In 2020, we had 18 departments contact us to assist them for basic computer literacy skills. At the same time, the goalposts for basic literacies have shifted to include digital media literacy. And now we need to think about our students who require basic computer lit literacy skills and in addition, they need to attain digital media skills now because when they go into the workplaces, they're expected to edit image, images, to edit audio and video and even to create 
websites and portfolios. Hence, the SEED team has designed a new course, Dig Digital Media Literacy, and we recognize that students need to be equipped with the necessary knowledge and skills to become familiar with the use of and production of digital media content. Lecturers are now increasingly asking students to make use of digital media for assessment purposes. So, when you ask your student to submit a digital story or, or an e-portfolio or a video, you need to make sure that the student is prepared and familiar with the tools prior to asking them to submit an assessment of that type. If we're going to ask the academics to rethink their teaching, learning and assessment practices, we need to make sure that they are ready. So we need to provide strategies and support methodologies in order to equip the staff and students with the necessary skills and knowledge. As a leader, I had to ensure during this lockdown period that the SEED team is able to assist the staff to design and develop their online environments and to prepare the staff and students for online examinations. 95% of the academics have adopted online practices and we recorded by the end of September 1,364 online modules within our learning management system, the Sakai platform, namely Ecomba. 1,428 training workshop sessions was conducted by our various niche areas, e-tools and assessment, ICT skills training and multimedia. And our Ecamba system has to be robust and stable as it hosts 26,157 users. These include staff, students and external partners. The SEED team collaborates with the ICS department at UWC, especially that we have to ensure that our learning management system that hosts thousands of users on a daily basis is stable. So we collaborate with this team in terms of hardware requirements, including storage capacity. And the C team also needs to ensure that they provide efficient support. So they have to attend to all queries that come in regarding this, the system. And as a leader, I have to ensure that the workflow support processes are in place. For example, queries would go to the e-learning box. The instructional design team would try to attend to them. If it's too technical, they have to forward it to our developers, who then engages with technical investigations, thereafter providing feedback to the instructional design team, who needs to then um, respond to the faculty. As you can see, we had to find ways of supporting 1,500 online training workshops. And this was done through flexible and professional support methodologies, including group and individual support in, um, interventions uh, via various modes of delivery. And your team has to be equipped in order to do lesson design, embedding of multimedia components, and to communicate in an asynchronous uh, manner as well as synchronous communication and especially during the exam period to create e-assessment um, tasks and then what about the rest of the staff of the university we're speaking about the university in the digital age is it only the academics that need to be equipped with ICT skills no we have so many staff members across all areas asking us to assist them with ICT skills during this lockdown period, including Word, PowerPoint, even Mass. So we cannot forget that all our staff are on this journey of um, the university in the digital age. When we assist the staff, we focus on effective design for student-centered online environments. So the focus is not only around the functionalities of the tools, but its pedagogical value for learning, teaching and assessment purposes. And we always inform staff to create the instructional strategies right at the start. Prepare 
the content prior to the design and the development of the online environments and to align the outcomes, the content, assessment and e-tools. The learning management system is not a dumping site and hence it is important that you have a team of instructional designers in order to assist your staff to apply these instructional design principles and to create structured interactive online environments. Lecturers are able to structure the online environments according to weekly lectures and tutorials. Lessons can be structured and aligned to themes. Content can be made available via pre-recorded videos. And the students are able to view the content online and download for offline usage. The team advises around different learning and teaching approaches. The flipped classroom approach, whereby students are able to receive material before the lecture and during the lecture they are provided material to deepen the understanding and then after the lecture they are able to engage in scenario based activities. The team also advises on scaffolded approaches whereby the content can be scaffolded and released based on the milestones achieved. And our learning management system caters for conditional release of learning content. During this lockdown period, the lecturers were advised around a multimodal approach in order to reach these students. So hence, the lecturer could make use of a Canva, narrated PowerPoints, WhatsApp and simulations. And this was all in line with leaving no student behind. In this case, a lecturer set up 11 student groups and scheduled lecture times for these groups. The students that struggled with uploading the assignments were able to then share via WhatsApp. The lecturer also structured the course resources within Ecamva and um, uploaded the material within Ecamva and provided the students with continuous assessment tasks, including a term assessment within the learning management system. UWC has recently partnered with Learning Science UK. This has led to SEED collaborating with the science faculty to embed pre-lab simulations into structured online environments. The team also assists the dentistry lecturers to create interactive online module guides and it enables the students to work through specific units of work an online interactive module guide includes outcomes, learning content, assessment, both theoretical and clinical, rubrics aligned to the assessment task, homework tutorials, and various multimedia components. We also focus on the discussion forum as a communication and assessment tool. In this case, for example, the discussion forums were created to allow for engagement between the students and their clinical supervisors and lecturers and the students were able to engage with the lecture content as well as the clinical component. In this case, the lecturer was advised to use the chat room as an informal discussion space and then the discussion forum for formative assessment purposes. The students posted their opinion pieces in the forum and they were required to comment on another student's response. SEAT and various other stakeholders are engaging in discourse around the rethinking of assessment practices for student access and success. Online take-home exams include reflective pieces, case studies, summaries and even research proposals. The team is assisting staff and students to create e-portfolios and these portfolios become spaces to collect milestones achieved. Students are also creating e-portfolios for summative assessment purposes and are able to collate information, record learning activities, reflect and share accomplishments and insert the necessary multimedia components. In this case, the prospective educators engage in a summative um, assessment portfolio and they were able to reflect on their progress and take ownership of their learning using this form of assessment. We advise around the functionalities around the tests and quizzes e-tool. However, 
We also advise around the pedagogical value of the e-tools. For example, the subject matter expert is reminded that it's up to them to consider effective design aimed at targeting various cognitive levels when they create MCQs. Lecturers are also advised around the importance of constructive feedback and rubrics. In this case, the C team assisted a lecturer to create a final summative assessment rubric aligned to four main questions and the rubric was aligned to criteria, application and theory. Stakeholders across the academic and professional support centres should contribute to the discourse around quality assurance and enhancement. Within the C team, we do continuous Q&A checks throughout the design and the development phases of an online environment. We can also send the completed online environment to a bodies, external bodies such as Quality Matters, and they are able to provide you a detailed scorecard. The scorecard entails review standards and each specific standard is either met or not met. The reviewer will add comments if a standard is not met. Seats practices and strategic decisions are informed by research and vice versa. And this also enables us to ensure quality assurance and review processes within specific contexts. If universities are going to strive to become centers of excellence at the cutting edge of technology, it is important that we continue to think about our long-term trajectories based on research. And so at SEAT, we will continue to do research around flexible learning teaching processes, change management strategies, e-pedagogy, and effective use of the tools for blended and distance learning purposes. It is important that we don't forget about the modernization of our venues as well. So the standardization of our audiovisual teaching aids across the campus community is very important. As a leader, it is important that you think about new developments and also be realistic around the current approaches. During this lockdown period, we still have to think about how are we going to fix our classroom venues. We need to keep abreast of change. Newer devices are aligned to newer hardware requirements. And then I had to think about our audiovisual team that needs to be on campus now to support either events or executive meetings, even memorial services. And then what about the future? We're thinking about remote teaching and learning and streaming capabilities, video conferencing tools, and even thinking about remote monitoring through virtual remote monitoring software. We will be able to control the projectors, but there are still things that require face-to-face -face audiovisual support. We cannot ignore that. Changing a bulb, replacing a faulty cable, being there when the staff needs you, when human error comes into play, somebody can't use a control panel, you still need the support team to be there physically. As a leader in ICTs, I've also seen improvements, enhancements and new developments at the University of the Western Cape. I remember the time when um, the university was experimenting with QL Next Gen, an open source learning management system. And then we implemented Sakai, which is also an open source system. And now during this COVID period, we've seen how thousands of users access the Sakai platform for remote teaching and learning. In 2019, the C team started creating an awareness around ARVR, sending out messages around definitions, around augmented reality categories, how VR can enhance the classroom, and how you can enhance your lecture presentations using augmented reality. The university has established a partnership with EON regarding augmented and virtual reality. We are able to make use of the library 
and we also be able to make use of the 3D assets to create interactive lessons. Seed's current engagement with the, um, with the E.ON team is around the integration of E.ON platform with our learning management system, Ecamba. Recent new developments also include exploration of proctoring services, especially for the integrity of examinations, and these automated systems will enable us to flag suspicious activity through automated system or by the manual invigilator. And um, the C team will be conducting a pilot with volunteers across the campus community. And this will serve as lessons learned for further rollout. Our IOP task teams should focus on the call for more structured learning, which gave rise to social and situated learning perspectives, and especially the effects and influences of social and cultural interaction on the individual learner. And then remember that learning also occurs in informal settings, and the success thereof is determined how, by how the individual becomes competent in that setting. But we should be cognizant of the fact that these two were criticized, as we cannot assume that our online communities of practices um, are stable and that our students will easily adapt to it. Our IOP task teams should also focus on the ever-changing environments, which have given risen to self-theories and humanistic perspectives, which focuses on experiential learning and personal growth. And the encouragement of self-directed learning and the importance of creating supportive environments for personal growth. However, too, we must be cognizant of the fact that these two have, uh, we cannot be too optimistic and ignore the fact that many students may not be able to make positive choices on their own. This entire presentation focuses on the student. Even when I speak about training staff, it was all about creating effective online environments well designed for the benefit of the students. And I believe that we can grow a cater of people across generations within blended teaching and learning environments. I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you. And as the C team, we will continue to share good practices around learning, teaching and assessment, and especially showcasing the efforts that are made by faculties across the campus community and the relationships we've built with the staff across campus. That's very important. Please take some time to view our blogs and this showcases the use of effective um, technologies for teaching, learning and assessment purposes. Thank you.